We're rolling into week five. You're scrolling through the names on the waiver wire, trying to pick up a running back, and you see that old name of Kareem Hunt right there, and you're wondering what to do. We've been talking about the Chiefs' backfield for some weeks now, and now Kareem Hunt scored a few fancy points. He looks very enticing. So we got to deep dive the numbers right now to see whether or not you need him for fantasy football going forward because you might not but you might need him so we're going to take a look at him but before we dig in you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're doing these deep dives every day multiple players a day as many players as possible so you can get the advanced analytics you need so you can make your decisions on these players click that button stop missing out but cream hunt has been very interesting. He was signed to the 53-man roster midweek last week, which perked our ears up. We were watching him. We wanted to see what was going to go on with Kareem Hunt, what was the touches going to look like, when they were going to happen, how many, and then we rolled in to week four against the Chargers. You see 14 carries, 69 yards, three targets, two catches, 16 yards off of that. Some fancy points right there. And you're getting very excited about Kareem Hunt. You're getting very excited about that. That being said, you're looking forward to him to see what he's going to do going forward because he is on the Chiefs. You do get that Chiefs value in fantasy because you know they're going to move the football. You want the running backs on the Chiefs. You saw what Isaiah Pacheco was doing. You want Kareem Hunt. You're looking at the snaps here. 28 for Kareem Hunt. 25 for Samaj P. Ryan, 11 for Carson Steele. We're going to go over that in depth later in the video to why that happened. We're definitely going to speculate, but we got a lot of information on that to cover with you guys. And Andy Reid going into this matchup right after last week's game kind of gave you some tidbits to why, but I want to go over this clip. Because it gives us some information to what he's looking at and what he's looking for in the backfield. And I just wanted to think about the running game. Obviously, you had some faith in Carson, but to see him do what he did last week, how, how reassured are you going forward that, okay, that's that's more established than perhaps you would have thought? Uh, listen, I, I thought he did a nice job for his first game. <clears throat> I thought he did a real nice job. And... Um, He's got to fix a couple things on protection, um, but he'll take care of that. Um, and uh, the run game, he, he was hitting the right holes and working the daylight. He was uh, finishing runs and I mean, corrected the trying to elbow guys going through with his carry hand and cleaned that up from the week before. So, but he gives you an honest down and he's going to. He's going to run hard. He's a big kid. He's going, to, he's going to come at you. Andy Reid is a stickler of the finer details. He wants you to be protective of the rock. He wants you to be good in pass protection. If you're a liability, you're going to get yanked. That is what he's talking about. Carson Steele, good between the tackles. A good hammer when running the ball. But he wants reliability. We're going to look at Matt Nagy going into the week. Talking about the rotation of these running backs, the split and carries, what he was projecting out going forward. It's very interesting to hear what he was thinking about prior to this game. Can I see the playing mix with those guys, those three guys this Sunday? Um, probably to be determined right now. I don't know if we necessarily know. We're getting into you know our, our second day of the week here, uh, getting into some specific situational stuff, but... I think that Carson did a, did a really good job last year with the, the, or excuse me, last week with the attempts that he had and what he did. And now you just kind of get a feel with Kareem on how that's going to go. I don't know if we necessarily know that answer yet. We got to get through practice and get a feel for it. Going into this game, nothing was in concrete. They wanted to go over the concepts going into the matchup. Also, if there was a running back running hot between the three, they were going to roll with it. If there was a running back not running hot and being a liability, that he's getting yanked. That's just the bottom line with this offense. That's the bottom line with the coaching staff. They want reliability. Think about the wide receivers in this offense. All these ancillary wide receivers we've been looking at over time. The reason why some of these guys have not been getting on the field, not reliable, 
not being able to run the plays correctly, not being able to create the separation to what they find acceptable, and that's why they're not on the field. They could be good players. They could be good on the field. They could be nice and flashy. But reliability is huge in this offense. And if you thought Kareem Hunt was done, he gave you two runs of 15-plus miles per hour. Looking good on the field. Watching him on the tape, he had some pop. It looked good. He looks like he was coming back. And the thing that we were talking about earlier is coming to fruition when you look at the touches here. Because Carson Steele had a fumble. And that fumble impacted things. Kareem Hunt, 14 carries, 69 yards, 4.9 yards per carry. Last week, it was Carson Steele getting it. Samaj P. Ryan is the sandwich. We're getting the Samaj P. Ryan sandwich right now. Five carries, 14 yards, but he got the touchdown. He got like nine-something fantasy points on the week. But that fumble was huge for Carson Steele. Rumbling up the gut, it pops loose, and that was early in the first quarter. And then after that, the carries just dissipated, and you're looking at the routes ran. He ran four routes. He was barely on the field after that. That being said, Kareem Hunt ran 11 routes in this matchup, getting opportunity in the passing game. We know he's good in the passing game. That was his role in Cleveland because Nick Chubb was getting it done in all phases, but Kareem Hunt... A big back, good between the tackles, also good in the passing game, also very reliable. And a running back to look at going forward for this team. And you're looking at Carson Steele, did not give much workload or opportunity, especially after that fumble. And then the week prior, 17 rushing attempts. So he could come back, but he's in the doghouse. And you got a good running back right now that's running hot with Kareem Hunt. Samaj P. Ryan is sandwiched right now. But he could get some goal line looks. He did last week. He got that touchdown. But Samaj P. Ryan is sandwiched. And Kareem Hunt didn't get any pass blocking snaps. I don't think that's anything to note. But something to look at here. That could increase. Especially he's dependable there. But also we got guys in the system for multiple weeks in an off season. So you got him back there. But when Kareem Hunt's on the field. He's either running routes. Carrying the ball. And that's a good thing to see as well. But you're looking at Kareem Hunt, 10.5 PPR fancy points on the week per fancy pros there. Got him ranked as an RB3 in scoring. Sleeper had him at like 14 points. Tomato, tomato. We saw what he did on the ground, getting the touches, and we chase workload, not fancy points. And the workload right now is going to Kareem Hunt. But the thing about this, we're looking at the schedule going forward. We got some tougher matchups. But when we're looking at this team and we're looking at what we heard from the coaching staff going into week four, it may not matter. Because Kareem Hunt has to continue to play well. Any blip on the radar. And he's probably going to get yanked real quick like Carson Steele. Carson Steele looked good in week three. But they did have some issues with that. Because that is what Andy Reid said straight up in the press conference. If you read between the lines of what he said. That being said, we could see a carousel effect with this backfield. Kareem Hunt is the hot hand right now. That is the hand you want to roll with, but for the long term, it is iffy depending on what happens in-game. It is an in-game scenario. Nagy said that pretty much in that press conference. It's going to be an in-game scenario for these running backs. Whoever has the hot hand is going to roll with it. Kareem Hunts likely do have a hot hand due to experience and due to his ability in the passing game. But again, the chips got to fall where they may. We know Hunt's got the hot hand right now. But you don't want them. You don't need them. You're good at running back. You don't care about this backfield. You're staying away. Or you're just going to go off the cheapest running back in this backfield off the waiver wire. You may let it run and then pick up Steele or Samaje, whoever got dropped. You're not wasting fab. You're just going to pick up the cheaper one. Kind of like what a lot of other people did with Kareem Hunt two weeks ago. Maybe that's what you're looking at doing. That could be a good philosophy as well. But you need them. You need touches. Cream hunts the hot hand for that. But I'm also here to tell you that it's not guaranteed. Especially from what we saw. One thing bad happening. It could be another running back in. Also, it could be Carson Steele running strong. Getting some carries. It could be Samaj P. Ryan running strong. Getting extra carries. Just something to note going forward. And Nagy did not know. Even after a Carson Steele performance. Where he got 17 carries. Looking good. A lot of people pumped up about him. A lot of people started Steele over a bunch of other running backs. Nagy still did not know 
what they were doing with the backfield going into the week, especially middle of the week. That being said, that's something to know that maybe it's going to be more in game when they make these decisions with the touches, who's going to be out for what series and how many series and for how long. Buyer beware, but right now Kareem Hunt is the hot hand. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching, catch you on the next video.